Welcome back to winter day 13 of the Stardew Valley min-max and 100% perfection guide. The time has finally come. We have obtained over 100 golden walnuts and can enter the mysterious key golden walnut room, which we will be doing today. We will find out what our first key challenge will be and we will be able to take it on next time. Today, we will also have a harvest of starfruit on the ginger island and replant it with more starfruit seeds. And at the end of the day, we'll have a quick volcano run. So let's go ahead and get started with winter day 13, which is a super luck day. So if there is a good amount of time for the volcano at the end of the day, that'll be some nice luck there. But we will need to do some morning chores at the farm here first, including petting the animals here. The main reason I still want to increase my friendship with the animals is for the ducks, for the duck feather, for Leo. Because Leo is someone we still need to level up friendship with. The void eggs are also nice to have if we can start getting some iridium ones of those to quickly level up Sebastian. But other than that, there isn't anybody that really would benefit from the animal gifts. There is Emily with the wool and Leia and Robin with the goat cheese, but all of them we should be pretty good with friendship with. It shouldn't be too hard to level them up, that is. Anyways, we're gonna skip over some inventory organizing and I'm pretty much grabbing everything I'll want to take with me. I'm gonna sell a pearl and some golden pumpkins for some money and 419 gold star star fruit, which should be at least 500,000 G. For tomorrow which we will use to purchase an upgrade so we'll see that later but for now we will harvest the crab pots here and I'm gonna head down to the fish pond down here and throw in a super cucumber to get that going take the stingray row and I will actually turn that into age row since we haven't done an age row yet so we'll need to ship that and skip over another organizing and head over to Clint's now the reason I did sell all of that golden star starfruit and feel justified in doing so is we will have plenty of regular and silver tier starfruit to turn into wine. So it is okay that we sold the gold star starfruit because we probably wouldn't get around to turning it into wine. Now I did sell a whole bunch of iridium bars here for some instant money because we will be needing to buy a whole bunch of starfruit seeds today. So. While we're at Clint's here, we are going to break open some geodes and golden coconuts right here. You can see from the predictor that I had to skip over a couple with omni geodes, and then I could get the banana and mango sapling, which we will plant so we can have two of each fruit tree there. We'll also line up some artifact troves here for two pearls just for a little extra money, and we'll get those. But first, we have to organize our inventory as I always have quite a full inventory, there's always lots of items we need to take with us, but as you can see I am just trashing a lot of things, and the things that I can sell to Clint I will sell to him of course to get a little more money from it, but anyway we've almost opened all of the geodes here, I will open the artifact trove here for the pearl, then one more omni geode to skip over, and then we will get over to the final artifact trove here which will be a treasure chest. And you can actually see now from the geode predictor that it is up to date with my current play and I haven't opened any geodes past this point. So I am around winter day 20 right now. So once I pick that back up, we might open a bunch of geodes before year two just to get some extra money if we need since geode opening doesn't really take up any time. So we might be able to make a decent extra money from treasure chests and other valuable items, but it probably won't impact it too much, but we might still do it for fun. We'll see. Anyways, after Clint's I warped to the desert and dug up any artifact spots, and now we are heading into Sandy's Oasis to spend all of our money here on starfruit seeds. We'll just go ahead and buy as many as we can, as it is okay to have extra as we'll keep needing to replant them every harvest at the Ginger Island. This is our first harvest of starfruit at Ginger Island. I forget exactly how many starfruit I have planted there right now, but we'll see that a bit later. And it should be under 628, which is the amount of starfruit seeds we have, so we should have 
plenty to replant. We will be needing 1000G for the boat ticket, so I do claim some quest money rewards there. And we can go ahead and warp onto the beach now. At the beach, we will first dig up some artifact spots before we head on over to Ginger Island, just like we dug up some at the desert. And the main reason I am taking the time to dig these up is because we still are in need of the palm fossil. This artifact seems to be super rare for me for some reason, even though it honestly isn't all that rare. At the desert, it has a 7% chance to be dug up, and then it can also be dug up in Cindersap Forest and the beach, although the chance is only around 0.6%, and it can even be found in bone nodes like the ones found at the dig site in Ginger Island, so it's strange how we haven't gotten one yet. But oh well, we'll keep trying while we're at the beach, of course, we'll forage and we'll also harvest this crab pot right here as we still need a shrimp and a lobster, I believe, for the fish up everything. So we'll hopefully get that soon. And then we do have the 100 bug meat to drop off, completing the Willy's Juicy Bugs quest now. And we can use our 1000 G to travel on to Ginger Island. And there is a panning spot, we'll see what we get. An earth crystal and two iron ore, not very exciting at all, but we will head over to the farm now and start working on harvesting the star fruit, which there is a lot of, so it will take quite a bit of time. Before we start, we will need to organize our inventory and we can get rid of a treasure chest and two pearls by selling them and then we will need to sort our inventory again, grab everything we want, and then we can start harvesting some star fruits. Harvesting any type of crop on Ginger Island will have a chance to give a golden walnut and up to five of them. I am not sure how many we have gotten yet. We haven't harvested a whole lot of crops here on the island, so probably none, but with this harvest we have so many crops here as you can see, we have already gotten two golden walnuts, so there is a pretty good chance we should get up to five. So that's three right there, and two more right there. So yep, we have already gotten up to five golden walnuts, so we can't get any more from harvesting crops. And that was pretty quick, so it seems like the drop rate of the golden walnut is pretty high. But anyway, we will continue to harvest the star fruits, and while I am here down at the bottom of the farm, we will take a quick break to plant our new banana and mango saplings. You'll see a very nice quality of life thing here where if you try to plant a fruit tree it won't let you if it won't be able to grow here or if it's too close to another tree. There, it was always the case where you couldn't plant trees where they couldn't grow, but you could plant them too close to another tree where if you had them both planted they wouldn't be able to grow and that used to be the case for previous versions of Stardew, so with the 1.5 update I believe that quality of life feature was added and it is very nice so you don't accidentally plant fruit trees too close to each other. Anyway, having the second mango tree won't do much for us, it will give us more mangoes for gifts for Leo, but that isn't really too necessary since we have duck feathers. But the second banana tree will be very nice. Now once they have both fully matured, we will get two bananas per day, allowing us to do the banana altar sooner and the island warp obelisk be able to construct that a whole lot sooner. We have almost harvested all of the star fruit here. I did remember to bring my scythe so I could harvest that single wheat crop there and I will have to harvest some of these taro roots here in order to place a iridium sprinkler down, which I did make an iridium sprinkler earlier, so that we can water all of those pineapple seeds and crops that we have right there, since three of them did not get watered. If you had noticed, I did have to manually water them, but when I come back, I will place down that sprinkler, but we will take a quick detour now while the NPCs are here. I will give Leo a duck feather who is usually somewhere around the island. We don't have anything for Pam since we're at max friendship with her. We do have a wool for Emily which is a loved gift and then a diamond for Jody, which is a loved gift. We will head back to the island farm now and plant the starfruit seeds. 
and while I plant, I'll give an update regarding my channel and videos and streaming. To start, I am going to have a lot more time for making videos, over summer at least that is, so I should be able to make at least two videos per week. However, a lot of this time will have to be put towards actually playing the game and planning the run since I only have footage recorded up until winter day 20 and we're nearing that day quickly. This also means I can try streaming, which I have never done before, but the best way to learn is to just do it, so I plan to try it out sometime during the week of May 16th. I'm not sure what day and time exactly yet since I'm going to try to test things out first, but I will give another update on that next video, which should come out Friday. And with the gameplay that I do live stream, I will of course still edit and do a voiceover as usual to make the actual series videos, so if you're only interested in the usual videos, that's totally fine, and nothing will change with those, and I'll for sure finish off this series until I reach perfection. We'll talk more about what comes after this series another time, but I do have quite a few potential ideas for more videos and series in the future. For now, let's get back to the gameplay where we have finished planting all of our starfruit seeds and we'll quickly hoe some more ground over here to plant some taro tubers since we can plant on the left side of the river as well. Then we'll be able to head on over to the mysterious key room for the first time, having over 100 golden walnuts and we'll be able to enter it where we will be met with a cutscene. Mr. Key explains to us what this room is all about and it is the first time in game that we actually learn about the perfection goals and will also be given access to a tracker to track each individual perfection goal. In order to assist with perfection there is a shop where we can obtain powerful items and recipes at the cost of key tokens, which we will be able to obtain by completing Mr. Key's special challenges. They won't be easy to complete, however, and we can only get one of these challenges per week, similar to the special orders, but we can check right here what we can get and the Skull Cavern Invasion will be the first one we choose. Not only does it reward 40 key tokens, or gems as they're called, but it also upgrades Skull Cavern so we can obtain some new loot, and we can also get key gems as drops from enemies. Right here you can see our current perfection status, and we are only at 25%, but that percentage will fill quickly once we do goals such as crafting everything, which we'll do all at once. But anyway, we have left keys, walnut room, and right here, the reason I am untilling this soil is so that artifact spots can appear, because I do want the snake spine to donate to the field tent. We'll also quickly mine the muscle rocks here, although I do think I have gotten all the golden walnuts that we can from them. They are still nice because they count as fish, and fish will be needed in quality fertilizer if we ever decide to craft a whole bunch of that. And we'll quickly skip over sorting, and we'll finally buy this mailbox upgrade here, which isn't very useful, but after we purchase this upgrade and the pairs repair the mailbox here for us. Of course we'll get mail here, but more importantly, it'll unlock a new upgrade for us, but first we'll have to reload the game scene. But once we come over to the parrot here, we do have exactly 20 golden walnuts to buy the farm warp obelisk here, which will allow us to warp back to the farm for free. So obviously not the most useful thing since Farm warp totems aren't too hard to come by, we've got quite a few of them, but it is still nice if we are at the island farm and need to get back home quickly. Now that we have planted all of the starfruit seeds and checked the mysterious key golden walnut room, we can get towards the end of the day, which will be spent at the volcano, but first we'll take a look at the dig site here, harvest the resources from it, then we will go into the field tent over here, 
where we can donate a few of these things. We can't finish any fossil collections yet, but that's okay. I just wanted to get two of these fossils out of my inventory and chest storage just to have some extra space. The fossils that we do need still is the fossilized spine, which can be found either by digging artifact spots at the beach or fishing in the dig site might be easier and the fossilized tail we still need, which is found from panning at the dig site, which we have been trying for. And then for the snake, we need the snake skull, which can be found from a variety of different artifact spots or fishing on the farm area. And then the last one, the snake vertebrae, is another one we've been trying for by digging artifact spots in the farm area. So we will keep trying for all of those fossils to get the golden walnut rewards, which obviously are needed for perfection. But for now, today, we will end the day here at the volcano. It is already 8 p.m., so we don't have a whole lot of time here. The main goal won't be getting towards the forge or anything, but we do want to get to the ninth floor to get the chest there, because most often, we can get the rare chests on that floor, although I'm not even sure what I would want from rare chests anymore at this point. We already have the hot java ring and the mermaid boots, so I'm not sure, but still, it is a nice goal to try to get to the ninth floor while collecting as many resources as we can along the way. Of course, cinder shards, but even then, there's not much more we want cinder shards for. It might be nice to have a stockpile of them in case we want to change any of our tool enchantments or get different modifiers for our weapons or invest in an iridium needle eventually which will do quite a bit of damage if we get the critical hit bonuses on them at the very least it might be fun to use as a secondary weapon because i haven't really tried it out ever so it might be fun to give it a go we'll also need 50 cinder shards for the deluxe retaining soil recipe, which we can trade the 50 cinder shards for, for that recipe from the island trader, but 50 cinder shards should not be hard to acquire. The main thing is, the main reason we want to slay the magma spirits more is for the monster slaying reward, since that is a necessary perfection goal. Anyways, the volcano is still nice to run through since we can get a variety of ores and other resources, but I do believe that Skull Cavern is more lucrative for min-maxing due to how much iridium we can get there. And now with the key challenge we accepted today, Skull Cavern will be even more lucrative, but at the same time, much more challenging. The enemies will be much tougher with more health and dealing more damage, but this should not be too much of an issue for us if we are careful, and of course, we will have plenty of healing items too. The challenge not only makes Skull Cavern tougher, but we have to make it all the way to floor 100. Of course, this challenge can be cheesed by just using staircases all the way to floor 100, but we will not be doing that, and only use crafted staircases on annoying floors, or if we get towards the end of the day and need them to make it all the way down. If you are looking forward to this challenge, which will be the next video, please consider subscribing so you can be sure to see it when it comes out, and all the future videos as well. We will be passing out here in the volcano very soon, which will bring us to the end of this video. Next time, along with the key challenge at Skull Cavern, I'll also be sure to give an update on streaming, as I mentioned earlier. And also, feel free to leave a comment, perhaps let me know about your experiences with coming across Key's Walnut Room and Perfection for the first time. Were you surprised at all the difficult challenges offered or all the cool unlockables from the shop available? My first time experiencing Ginger Island was spoiler free and I was already impressed with the insane amount of new content. When I came across the Walnut Room and Perfection, I was even more surprised and impressed with how much more there was left to do in the game. Anyways, we'll end here, and as always, thank you for watching, and goodbye.